Ladies and gentlemen, come gather around, come gather around, come gather around. Today, we're sort of going to build a hydraulic press that I've already built. And I didn't video the building at all because it was years ago. But I'm going to go through how you'd want to build one of these, tips that I would give you, and we're going to upgrade it. Let's go! I often use my press for doing ball joints, suspension bushings, or even uh, re-arcing or de-arcing leaf springs. I don't have a video of that, sorry. So this whole thing is made out of one 20-foot length of 5-inch channel iron. I put wheels on the bottom so I can move it around. You don't have to have a whole lot of rigidity in the bottom of the press. What matters really is that it's rigid here, because there's where the stuff is happening. All that stuff does is keep it from falling over. I used a manual bottle jack for a long time. Um, it worked fine. I went through two of them in the six years or so that I've, I've been running this press. Up at the top just kind of looks like this. Down below just kind of looks like this. These are just simple eye bolts. You could probably get springs. I got these from Princess Auto just to help pull it back. <clears throat> this is two inch by two inch quarter wall. This was bent in a hydraulic press. Uh, not this hydraulic press because it was a little challenging to make. Uh, you could make this in other different ways. This was a piece of machined cold rolled steel. It just has a hole inside it and a bolt where you can uh, pinch things into it depending on what you want to press. That's actually pretty handy. These, the pins that hold it, are just uh, three quarter inch bolts. I'd recommend a little bit longer so that you're not sitting on the threads, but honestly it doesn't really make that huge a difference. Uh, but if the threads could start here and just cut them off, or just make quarter inch pins, that would probably be fine. Three quarter inch pins, I guess. This is half inch plate, probably doesn't need to be. This is half inch plate, probably should be. And this is half inch plate and probably doesn't need to be. If I were to make this again, I would make this 64 inches tall. And then I would make these 29 inches long. So they extend past here and the bolts can move from the inside to the outside. That gives you a nice, that gives you a nice handle for lifting the table when you're trying to change the height. This is a lot harder to hang on to. This one I keep at 27. <clears throat> it's five inch channel with inch and three quarter sides. This is about 23 and 3 8 inside. If you're using this bottle jack, you want the eye bolts or the springs center to center close to 10 inches. I think I'm 9 and 7 8 It doesn't really matter. Just make sure the jack will fit. This is 2 inch round with an inch and 3 8 hole in it. Uh, I believe I machined it. I would probably just look for some Schedule 40 pipe that you can put on here. It'll probably work fine. <clears throat> Maybe inch and a half pipe. I made these legs three feet long just because it made sense to me and it was just made out of scrap uh, two by two angle, three sixteenths thick. Honestly, I'd be making that out of whatever I had lying around. There's no rule about how big this needs to be. It might be smart to have some angle in here or some kind of uh, triangulation to keep this thing from falling over. Hasn't fallen over yet, but I don't live on a San Andreas fault or nothing. This is just a piece of Schedule 40, probably three quarter inch or half inch Schedule 40 pipe. I think I welded some nuts in the end and I've got a bolt going in here just to hold it together. It is, in this case, uh, looks like 22 and 15 sixteenths. I would probably make it to fit. Don't trust everything you see on the interwebs. All of these holes are three quarter inch diameter. They're four inches apart just because it made sense to me. You could make them whatever you want. I don't think it matters. I wouldn't drill them into a slot. That would be dumb. 
Uh, one of the key things with this is to make absolutely freaking sure that the hole you drill on this side matches the hole you drill on that side. And because the inside of channel iron is angled, you really can't drill through and then keep drilling unless you have like a milling machine and a big long end cutter that can do a six inch cut. Um, in the meantime, very careful measuring. Um, center punch, so you got a little point on there with the center punch, you're going to smack that with your hammer so that you get a good dent. The cool thing with center punches is you could just, if you get it in the wrong place, you can just tip it over, beat it with a hammer and move the center punch mark to where you need it to go. That's kind of handy. Then you need to use a pilot drill. I usually pick about 3 16 anything under than a quarter. The pilot hole follows the center punch mark. If you screw up on this, this isn't going to save it. You can, if you're careful, angle the drill bit. You can be drilling and like that's not in the right place, so you can kind of angle it and push the hole over and redo it. But once this pilot is drilled, everything else is going to follow it. It's really hard to change the hole if you screw up. Like a pilot of an airplane flies the ship, the pilot drill flies all the other drills and they'll follow it. Then you can work your way up in drill bits. Um, if you're really adventurous, you could probably do a step drill. These are always kind of fun. I like these. Uh, the cheap ones, I don't like so much. I've actually sheared them off trying to drill big holes. This is pretty skookum. I like it. Um, I'm not sure how well it'll drill through here. I didn't use this one. Instead, I worked my way up in drill bit sizes to this one. It's three quarter, uh, but it's got a straight shank so that I can use it in a drill. You'll need a half inch chuck on your drill. Um, your cordless drill is going to be unhappy with this. Uh, and I created one drilling a hole saw, whether using a hole saw with it. Um, at some point, if you're, using, <laughs> if you're using a cordless drill, you're going to go through a lot of batteries. And when it catches, it's not comfortable for your wrists. I did find drilling a lot of these on the drill press was handy. If you could lay the whole thing flat, just angle it through and do the drill, and just go a drill at a time with the drill press. That worked pretty slick. Uh, you'll wish you had not put your drill press in the corner of your shop when you're trying to put a six foot length of channel iron on the drill press, because it just plain doesn't work. Partly why my drill press is not bolted down. I can move it. If you can't get it to your drill press, or your drill press doesn't have the guts, then you want the wrist breaker. Oh, what's the wrist breaker, you say? This is the wrist breaker. Makita makes this sweet drill. It's a two-handed jobby, three if you're an alien. And the cool thing about this, half inch chuck, I think this is eight amps of jam. Uh, eight and a half amps, nice. This thing's really pretty cool. When this catches, you spin. So it's a nice handy drill to use. Be mindful of what it's gonna do. It has uh, basically one speed. It has basically one speed, um, catch and spin you clockwise, and catch and spin you counterclockwise. So it's, it's one of my favorites. Um, oh, the one at work doesn't do that. Probably used to do that, kids. Tee hee hee. So that's a good one to use. I do like corded tools because they tend to last. Once you've drilled through, you'll probably find they don't super align really well. They didn't for me. Uh, so what you can do with the drill bit, and it's not really good for the drill bit, is once you get the hole drilled, just kind of waller it out a bit. I think that's a word from Georgia. Um, so you just put the drill bit in, and then just kind of wiggle it around to make the hole a little bit more nauseatingly loose. Then these pins will slide through it a whole lot easier. You can sit there with a Dremel, you could put a slightly bigger drill bit in, Whatever. It's not a precision machine. It's a hydraulic press. It's going to work fairly well. Um, that was the most annoying part was drilling these holes. The rest of it was pretty easy and pre pretty straightforward. Oh, bother. Oh, my knees. Oh, my old man knees. Oh. Okay, if I can give you a lesson about hydraulic pressing, it's don't throw nothing out, okay? Keep everything, because at some point you're gonna need something that can press something that you don't have something to press for. Sockets work fine, um, but sometimes things get a little bit weird. So I've got a section of 
I don't know what this was. It might have been a roll cage tubing. This is some kind of a rubber pad stand for something from school gym equipment that I think got thrown out and I kept part of that because it's useful. This was part of my kid's basketball hoop stand and I cut it down and chopped it up before they were old enough to know that it was a basketball hoop because me and sports, man. Oh my gosh. These are old bushing sleeves from a suspension. Schedule 40 pipe. Apparently I cut a groove in there for some reason. This is just a hole saw that I lost all the teeth on it. So I machined it nice and flat. Makes a good way to press something in. Just a hunk of aluminum. Looks like it might have been a wheel from some grade nines metalwork project that they never took home. So I needed something that would press like this. Don't throw anything away. Oh, ah! I think this is a pinion bearing, probably from one of the differentials I did. Uh, and I just used this to press the old bearing back on. Might have been a pinion bearing, might have been an axle bearing. Don't throw anything away, you can always use it. Put all this junk in a bucket, uh, it's handy. And you'll never know how handy it is until you need it and you already threw it away. Also, mm, oh my knees again, more show and tell. This is some junk that I've made over the years for pressing. This is just a piece of half inch flat and a couple pieces of uh, angle iron on it. And I made this guy, and I think, I think I've got a smaller one somewhere else. But this guy would just be held in with that uh, round pipe on the bottom of the press. And then I can use this to press together. I mean, it'll fold 90 degrees if you want it, but it can also, you just go a little bit and get some gentle curves. And you've seen me do that on here. I don't know why this is here. That should have been in the other show. No idea what that's for. This is a bigger version of the same thing. And I've I made this little plate. Uh, I just took the milling machine and chopped her at 45 degrees. Uh, looks like I might have belt sanded it too. This is not finished yet. But it's going to go in like that. I need a, a bolt and... Uh, pipe to kind of guide it because this this could go like pachoo and that's gonna hurt uh, But this has been super handy. I haven't used this with it yet But this piece is just the big mama version of that and I've used this I think More likely I've used this guy which just gave me a slightly round surface This should have been solid because that's a little bit uh, too squishy and I can get gentle I can get gentle curves and things on this one. That was really kind of handy. This was not for the hydraulic press. It's just for, for lifting up engines from a variety of different means. Plans for, plans for this are on my website, gwellwood.com, um, if you need to lift engines. I just had it on the hydraulic press and I took it off to show you, uh, show you the press. For you guys who are into modifying vehicles, I have used hydraulic presses to re-arc or de-arc uh, leaf springs. So if you got a curved leaf on a vehicle and you want it to sit lower, you can put it in here with the leaf upside down, sitting on a piece of channel, and then you can just press the leaf and de-arc it and make it flatter. You can sometimes get away with a couple inches of change. Same thing with lift. If you got those leaf springs, you want your vehicle higher, you can put it on here, press it about every inch all the way up and recurve them to give it a little bit more lift. There are some limitations to that, but that's beyond the scope of this video. The thing with re-arcing or de-arcing leaf springs with this is your arm is going to get tired. So I have the opportunity here to upgrade the bottle jack to something that's going to be a little easier on my old chicken arms. So we're going to make that change. Let's check it out. That's it. Bye bye, bottle jack. You've been good to me. Oh, what have we here? Plastic bag with. Get it. 
Can't stand the sound of plastic bags on YouTube videos. Sorry. This is the same fun, it's still a 20 ton jack, but this beast back here is where all the fun begins. Let's put it on. If fate is kind to me, this will fit right in place. If I were to make one other change here, is I either put in a recess or some kind of ring to lock this in place so it doesn't move around. I think that would be safer. I've never done it. I don't remember when I made this. Might have been six years ago. Looks reasonably centered. This is really kind of sketchy looking, but um, one, wear face shield when you're using this and keep your dental records up to date. The beauty of this is this beast right here. Ho ho ho. I changed this fitting to what fits my shop. Let's get some air. I tell you, I'm looking forward to this. So I can put this together, shop air, but, and. Looks like you're going a little crooked there, Holmes. Okay, this was a good time to uh, upgrade. So I got a little thing in there to hold the bottle. <clears throat> Let's see if we can put her back together. Ugh, I've eaten my Wheaties today, laddie. Well, let's give it some air. Ha <laughs> ha. That's a lot better for old man muscle, which I may have mentioned comes with a price. It's called painkillers.
Boom! So yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good success. I'm happy with that. That saves me a lot of work. Woo! So, I showed you how I built my hydraulic press. The plans to build one of these with my recommendations, changes from what I've done, are in the description below. Be the first person to ask where's the link in the comments below. We did a couple upgrades right here. I made a square ring to hold the top of the jack in place. We upgraded from a manual 20 ton bottle to an air over hydraulic 20 ton. Definitely recommend that. Link in the description below. And if you want the ordinary Armstrong one, it's in the link below as well. Um, showed you all the little novelties and trinkets that I use for pressing stuff, some of which I've made and some of which I've just procured from various sources. Um, definitely a tool. When you need it, it's freaking awesome to have. And because it's on wheels, I can just wheel it out of the way if I don't need it or wheel it to where I do need it. On that note, I'm taking my hydraulic press out for dinner. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Take care. I never did finish it. I bought a quart of Tremclad hammered finished gray, never did spray it.